you are. Were you looking for me? We were wondering. Go on, Joan. Um, if uh, you want to be with us this weekend, we have a plan. We're going to Namir. You haven't been there, right? Nope. It's a lovely city. It has a lot of a lot of historical sites and, of course, great places to shop and delicious food. What do you say? I already have plans. I'd love to. I'd love to see it. Great! We can all go together. Joan really wanted you to come, but she was too shy to ask. It was her idea. Not shy. Thanks for thinking of me, Joan. Darren. Ah, Joan. You sweetheart. Chantel knows what's up, though. She's like, Joan wanted you. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. Oh, hold on a second. <sighs> Got tangled up in my cord again. Sorry about that. <laughs> what's going on? Chantel's late. Joan gave me an apologetic look before returning to her cell phone, speaking in French again. She's... stuck. <sighs> After a sigh, she passed the phone, knowing it would be faster if I talked to her. Chantel? Sorry, Melissa. Had to drop my brother off at a major soccer tournament and sort of got lost. Now, stupid tourist, you don't cross here! Uh, sorry, I didn't mean you, I meant... Gotcha, you're running late. I wanted to drive us to Namir. Maybe you and Joan can go ahead on the train? If all goes well, I'll be there after you arrive. Joan knows the area we plan to take you anyway. I glanced at Joan, who anxiously waited for an answer, and probably for her phone back. Hmm. Wait for Sean. Oh, all right, let's go. Yeah, we can do that. I'll see you later, Chantel. Have fun in the mirror. I'll definitely be there soon. Can I talk to Joan for a bit? Sure. Once Joan received her phone, they continued their conversation in French. A few minutes later, she ended the call, happy to be caught up with the plan. It'll just be you and me for a little while. Is that okay? Like... a date? Yes, a date. Reassured by my answer, she grabbed my hand and gave it a soft squeeze before pulling me toward the door. Let's go. Let us. Ooh, so this is the place I haven't seen yet. Namur. It was hard to contain my excitement. Namur was a densely packed city filled with little shops, restaurants, and windy streets. Whenever I felt like I lost my sense of direction, I looked for the Citadel, which was a fortress that stood on a hill, making it impossible to miss. Joan took my hand and led me to City Square, which was surrounded by colorful buildings. There were also food vendor stands. One in particular had a very long lineup. Whatever it had, it must have been delicious. Joan, what's that? I pointed to a curious display near a building at the edge of the square. There were two bronze statues of cartoony men, both with a snail. One was leashed while another was in a cage. Ah, uh, um, from a comic, I think? Namir likes snails. Um, I'm hungry. She peered at the food vendors and I nodded in agreement. Sure, let's eat something. We've walked around a lot already. I'm slightly concerned that she saw the snails and was like, I'm hungry. She simply smiled, responding to my light-hearted tone. As I took a step toward the lineups, Joan raised her hands to stop me. Surprise! Wait here, please! Oh, you're treating me? You sure? I pulled out a few euros, but she was insistent and, insistent and pointed to the pavement sternly. <laughs> I obeyed and sat down on the bench while Joan disappeared into the crowd. It felt like forever, but Joan emerged with a small plastic container. It was filled to the brim with a dozen of something gray and unrecognizable floating in a murky broth. This better not be snail soup. What is it? Ah, I knew it! Escargot! We... can share? Among the wrinkled snails, I noticed bits of onion and celery. It smelled savory, but the texture looked rubbery. She skewered one of the snails using a toothpick, then extended it toward me encouragingly. Here, say, ah. Uh... 
If it was me, I would pass, but okay. We've, look, we touched a dead pig for DeAndre. We can eat a snail for Joan. <laughs> Seeing Joan's delighted face convinced me, <laughs> convinced me. Even if I ended up not liking it, I could at least say I tried snails in Belgium. I leaned in and gingerly blew some of the steam off. When I was ready, Joan popped it into my mouth. The first few bites were chewy before my teeth sunk into the tender insides. It reminded me of scallops, only without the butter and garlic. Briny, but not overpowering. It was only then I noticed Joan anticipated my reaction. <laughs> oh my! Such love for, for escargot! This is really good! You like? I've never tried this before, but it's delicious! We eagerly dug into the container, taking turns feeding each other, giggling whenever a tiny mishap happened. Thank gosh for napkins. Gosh darn. There you are! Chantelle! She ate escargot! My mouth was full, so I could only nod, amusing Chantelle. Looks like you've already sampled some of our famous street food. Honestly, I thought you'd go for the frites first. You sure are adventurous. Joan's idea. I wasn't sure at first, but I'm glad I tried it. If you're still hungry, there's a great place here that serves crepes. Think of it as a reward for trying something new. We spent the rest of the day sampling various foods while we went sightseeing. I'm really glad we came here. Yay! That went well. And so did my internetting. Thank goodness. Oh, oh no, that was email, not internet. Oh, thank goodness you dance, girl! Okay. Um, I think I can get rid of that and do another socialize. We could probably get rid of all of our... This is the last week, I'm pretty sure. Um, and... Mm, empathy. Let's get more empathic. Okay. Play. Okay then, that was the cave, yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just in case you forget what it looks like, here's the cave. Chantelle, Joan, and I sat together, chatting lightly while we cleaned the finds. The mood was more serious than usual. It was the final week, and we were determined to finish as many documents as we could before the excavation wrapped up for the summer. Chantelle glanced down at the bone she was scrubbing and let out a heavy sigh. <sighs> I can't wait until this is over. And yet, lab work has grown on me. Is it because we stopped breaking stuff? <laughs> True. And once you can identify what you're cleaning, it's more fun. I better get used to it. I know I'll be doing this sort of thing when I'm not in the water. I bet you'll be cleaning different finds, though. Like coins and pieces of ship. And definitely no cave bear. Joan, do I le labo maintenant? Joan made a face and we exchanged a quick glance. On pew. I like it because I'm with friends. If alone, no. Too hard alone. I felt a light brush against my hand and I glanced down, watching Joan's fingers intertwine mine. Aww. Her movements were hidden by the sieve placed in front of us, and I gave her a small squeeze back. <laughs> Chantelle set her toothbrush before picking up her ink pen. So much for converting my best friend into becoming an archaeologist with me. Melissa, it'd be fun if we could work on the same site together. That'd be nice, but would there be much overlap at all? I guess it'll depend on what period we'd like to focus on. Underwater archaeology probably doesn't deal with prehistoric stuff often. You never know. Archaeologists found underwater caves containing Neanderthal remains before. Ah, the ladies. Sorry, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. You're going into underwater archaeology? That's amazing! What inspired you? Uh, I always liked reading about shipwrecks and stuff. And I loved swimming growing up, so it was a natural blend of my interests. Is that all? Also the Titanic movie. <laughs> oh, 
Rosemary laughed and slapped Chantel's back. Ah, there it is. It doesn't matter how it captures your interest, as long as it kindles a passion. Joan, do you appreciate archaeology more now that you've experienced it? Chantel translated the question. Joan thought for a moment before giving a tiny nod. I go because Chantel signed up. It was very hard. But I learn lots. I like museums now. I want to visit more of them. I also met Melissa. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad too. <laughs> Grinning, I raised our linked hands. Joan let out a little squeal, then blushed vividly. <sighs> Called it. It's not a big surprise. They've been lovey-dovey all week. <laughs> we giggled at Chantel's mock complaint. I leaned in and nudged Joan with my shoulder, our arms resting on the table between us. I can't blame them. Melissa is going back home soon. The lighthearted mood vanished and my stomach plunged at the thought. Way to kill the, uh, the mood, Rosemary. Joan squeezed my hand tightly, also feeling the same way, and I mustered a smile. I'll come back and see you again. Really? Of course. You're my girlfriend. My cheeks grew warm right after I said it. Joan grinned so brightly from the declaration that I felt giddy inside. They're serious about this. Good, because if you break Joan's heart, Melissa, I'll personally fly over to America myself and punch you in the stomach. Noted. I promise it won't come to that. Uh, Chantel, what does that mean? It's like the good luck phrase, break a leg. Really now? Thank you. <laughs> hey, poor Joan. She doesn't know what's, what's going on here. Your best friend is very violent towards me. Potentially. Woo! Thank goodness for all the succeeding. Yeah! We're so close to a hundred in culture and empathy. Ow. Ah, oh, these days are just flying by. Look at that. Ow. Oh no. Come on, girl. Yeah, 100! Woo! Can it stay there, though? <sighs> I sighed as I zipped up my rolling bag. The tent area was deserted. Everyone had either packed up and left, or were in the process. At the main entrance, I could see Sherry and the excavation team thanking the students as they departed. Sherry hasn't been angry and disapproving yet. I wonder if she will end up being... People were exchanging goodbyes, along with hugs or adding phone numbers. Shoji stood to the side, quietly digging his toe into the gravel. Um... It was nice meeting you, Shoji. Same here. Good luck with your archaeology. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of your summer. I mustered up my best smile as I waved him off. I barely finished when someone pounced on me. <laughs> How did I know it was going to be you? DeAndre clapped me on the shoulder, grinning widely. It was great meeting you, Mel. I hope you enjoyed Belgium, even if Corinne was only a small representation. I feel kind of teary-eyed saying goodbye to him this time for some reason. I'm like, ah, uh, it was so, so cute and romantic the last time, but oh, uh, He's just such a bud. You're such a bud, DeAndre. I did. Thanks for making me feel welcomed here, DeAndre. You take care of yourself. You two. If you're ever in the area, let me know and we'll hang out again. He raised his phone as a friendly gesture, then left as well. <laughs> when Kyler saw me, he simply gave a nod of acknowledgement. Hey, thanks for helping me out and stuff. It wasn't a problem. Good luck with your archaeology endeavors. <laughs> Maybe we'll meet up again. Don't be a stranger now. Right. Take care. Chantel and Joan approached me, and I threw my arms around them both in a group hug. This is it. It was really nice meeting you, Melissa. Likewise. Thanks so much for letting me stay the weekends with you two. I had a blast. I'm glad we can make your first experience in Europe a great one. I promise to do the same if you two come over to America. Oh, we definitely plan to. Right, Joan? Once we separated, I saw Joan nodding, no yeah, nodding eagerly. We talked a lot about it. 
We were thinking we could fly to Florida, rent a car, and then stay in California for the weekend. <gasps> Do you have any idea how much driving that'll involve? <laughs> Chantel and Joan exchanged quizzical glances before holding up a small number of fingers each. Six hours? I stretch out my arms for emphasis. The US is huge. If you drove non-stop, that'd be at least 30 hours. What? What about New York, then? Is that far? Uh, just a bit. We'll have to work out the details. I already added you to my social contacts. Same. We'll keep in touch. Chantel gre grinned mischievously. Greened mischievously. And keep your evening free tonight. This isn't the final goodbye. No? We made a plan. Exactly. Who leaves a friend on their own on their last night? Plus, we can drive you to the airport. Aw, normally I feel like I would be imposing, but I'll be selfish and say yes. I want to spend as much time as I can with you guys. Great. We'll be back in a few hours. Later. Why do I have a feeling Chantel is going to ditch? Once they were gone, I twirled around and hugged Sherry tightly, not caring that the others witnessed this. Sherry, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for this experience. I I'm so happy you accepted me for this field school. I'm not exaggerating when I say this was one of the best times of my life. Thank you for sharing this with me. I met so many wonderful people. I learned so much. I want to keep doing this. She patted me on the shoulder sympathetically, allowing me to calm down first. I'm glad. You know, you'll always be welcome back. I struggled to speak, but the offer caused my chest to tighten and I could only sob louder. It felt like a second home to me already in these two months. The routine, the earthy smell I swear I could never escape from, the digging in the cave, the sour fumes from the lab, the stupid drunken antics, the language barrier, the mundane camp food, the creaking museum roof, Hendrix Spiels, Rosemary's enthusiasm, even Augustan's lectures. I didn't want it to end. Thank you. I can't even express how much I'll miss this place. Thank you for teaching me. I learned more here than I ever have in any classroom. Nothing like experiencing the real thing, huh? It always makes me happy when students develop an appreciation for stone tools. Don't be a stranger now. I am pleased to know that you have found it to be a meaningful opportunity. Any of Sherry's students are allowed to return. A great dig, Petite Fleur. Thank you, everyone. Aside from the burnt flint incident. We continued to chat about future plans until Augustan checked his watch and announced it was time to go. Everything was locked up save for the usual front door. Hendrick even gave a spare key, along, of ins along with instructions of where to store it before I departed. You'll be fine returning on your own? Chantel and Joan will be driving me to the airport tomorrow. That's wonderful! Have a safe flight, and email me when you arrive home so I know you're okay. I will. Take care. Oh, we got Sherry's blessing on this one. My goodness. You're here. What's in the bags? I gawked as I closed the door behind them, watching Chantel and Joan carry st strained plastic bags. It's a surprise. Joan... Je m'occupe de préparer la nourriture. Proposez ton moment romantique à Melissa. Mon moment romantique? You're blushing too, Melissa. Guess it was obvious. A tad. <laughs> Chantel laughed at our bashful expressions. I'll be up in a bit. I'll be making some appetizers for our movie night. Oh, what kind? You'll see, but I promise you'll love it. Is it time for the romantic moment, Joan? She departed outside, leaving Joan and I speechless at the foot of the stairs. Shyly, Joan pointed upward. Um, let's go. <laughs> uh, uh oh, here we go. After we changed into our pajamas, we both set up the nail station, complete with files, bottles of polish, and adorable stickers. I smiled. They were definitely going all out. Ah, your pajamas are so cute! I love that she's a red hat and wearing pink. She looks great in it. I just, I just want to say I really like that. 
Joan gestured to the chair, and I sat down, scooting closer to her. Our knees were nearly touching as she leaned in, her hand hovering over the bottles. Um, style? Surprise me. Surprise? Up to you. I gestured to, gestured to her, and after a moment's reflection, she gave a resolute nod, as if she had something in mind already. She picked a white polish with a pearl shine to it, and I set my hand on the table. I admit this would be a nice indulgence. I didn't paint my nails since I arrived in Belgium, since I knew I'd just get dirt under them anyway. Although Joan was competent with getting the base done, she slowed down with the pink polish. She made odd swirls on each nail, then bit her lip in disappointment before she used the white shade again to cover it up. Whenever she blotched, she'd sigh and attempt to fix it. I pretended to be oblivious and tried not to giggle at her efforts. She was genuinely trying her best. What was she attempting to create, anyway? What design... Wait... Pink hoops? It's the logo from my sweatshirt! Hmm? Elated, I used my other hand, nails now dry to tap where the Lindy Hopper words would be if I wore it. It's a Lindy Hopper design, isn't it? Recognizing the term, she eagerly nodded, although I could tell she was still crestfallen over her rudimentary work. Ah. So cute. I spread my fingers out and held them up to show I was admiring them. It's lovely. Lovely? Really? I love it. You painted something I like. You're very sweet. To convey my message better, I gave her hand a squeeze. I'm glad you like it. The creak of the stairs signaled that someone was approaching. All prepared. I'll set this down in front of the mattress. Ready for some action movies? She was carrying a tray that had a piping bowl in the middle, surrounded by cut fruit, steamed vegetables, and various cubed chunks of bread. Carefully, she placed it in front of the mattress, making sure we could eat comfortably. Curious, I crawled over. I let out an elated squeal when I realized that it was cheese fondue. Eee, you guys are awesome! Belgium's famous for its chocolate, but we have an amazing cheese selection, too. You're spoiling me. You're all honestly spoiling me. I feel like we won your eternal friendship with this gesture. Told you she'd love it, Joan. La Poisson de Fromage. Oh, here, you should definitely try it with the walnut bread. Hey, don't use your freshly painted fingers. We got utensils here. We're not heathens. Chantel sat beside me while Joan popped in the movie. An action flick with English subtitles. However, the movi movie was entirely ignored, save for the occasional explosion, while we talked and ate lively. You really didn't have to do all this. Why not? It's your last night here. Besides, I expect you to do something similar when we visit you. I nearly choked on my pier chunk and hastily covered my mouth. You're serious about this? About visiting? Well, yeah. Joan and I did a lot of talking. And we both always wanted to travel, but couldn't agree where. Why not start somewhere we'd both love to go and with a friend to meet? Joan nibbled on her broccoli pensively, attempting to follow the conversation the best she could between Chantel's translations. Can we visit you? Of course, I'd love to have you two over. When the movie ended and our cheese fondue cooled off and forgotten, we got ready for bed. I guess since I was the guest, they wordlessly decided to have me sleep in the middle. Being the heavy sleeper Chantel always was, she instantly fell asleep, leaving me and Joan laying next to each other, staring at the ceiling. I grasped her hand, and we rolled until we both faced each other. The moonlight reflected off Joan's eyes. Ah, Oh, it's so cute! Let's look at all, oh, look at them! All oh, snug in bed, oh. Poor Chantel's just been cropped out of this picture, though. <laughs> I'll miss you. Yeah, I'll miss you too. Oh, wait! They're holding hands even! Oh, stop! I leaned in, careful not to startle her. Mutually, we tilted our faces, and I pressed my lips lightly against hers. They were soft and tasted of peach lip balm. <laughs> when we separated, Joan blushed and hid her face in the pillow. You're so shy. I'm not shy. As I reached out to stroke her hair, I felt a sharp pain shoot up my back. Ow! Melissa? 
Talk about a mood ruiner. I glanced back, feeling Chantel's knee still wedged against my spine. I wriggled farther away in an attempt to increase the distance. I didn't know she thrashed in her sleep. And that she could sleep through a hurricane, apparently. Is this why I'm sleeping in the middle? You're so sneaky, Joan. We're trading places. What? Switch. I grabbed her shoulders and tried to roll her over me. Seeing my intention, she resisted protesting. She squirmed out of my reach and we ended up giggling as she remained stubborn on the sleeping arrangements. Eventually, we decided to curl up right at the edge beyond Chantel's outstretched kicks. Our foreheads gently touched while we dozed off in an embrace. Ah oh well, no complaints there. <laughs> at the very least. Aw, and that's how it ended. Didn't even get driven to the, uh, to the plane and forsake our parents and stay here for longer. But, there should be an epilogue. Let's see. Four months later. It's always going to be four months later, apparently. And voila, this is my bedroom. I wildly gestured as Joan followed me through the entrance. Despite it being the holidays, I had no time to decorate it with a fake plastic tree or even hang, hang paper snowflake flakes next to the window. Good grief. Joan set her luggage down against the wall and gazed in awe. What a cute room! I love the chandelier and the flower vase! Although she was impressed with the interior decoration, I was more impressed with how fluent Joan's English had become over four months. No kidding. We remained in constant contact and we practiced speaking through video chats. My French remained abysmal, but at least all of my Spanish was coming back to me thanks to Chantal, and my parents were thrilled with my improvements. I still can't believe I'm here. Even for winter, it's pretty warm. It's a shame Chantal will miss celebrating Christmas with us. Why did she delay her flight by a week? Um, she wanted us to have our little honeymoon stage to ourselves. Honeymoon stage? I admit, simply being in Joan's presence made me beyond elated, and it showed on our faces. That's thoughtful of her. How long are the holidays in Belgium? We go back to school after the new year. Our exams were a few days ago. She looked down, appearing crestfallen, and I worried she didn't perform as well as she hoped. However, she lifted her chin, smiling widely. I think I did much better this semester. That's great, Joan. What degree did you declare? History of Art and Archaeology. Wow, they combined that? Is it History of Music and Art? Yes. I can still practice my flute, but I also pick a period to study. I went with classical. I like this approach more. I want to be able to teach music too, and this helps. I also feel closer to you. <laughs> During class they had a... Um, it's a lot of photos on the computer. Photos? Oh, a slideshow. Yes, a slideshow. They showed a picture of a flute over 40,000 years old. They said it confirmed the flute is the oldest musical instrument in history. It reminded me of you. So you think of me whenever you see old things? I guess if you put it that way, yes. Aw, I'm flattered. Is your English okay? Sometimes I worry I'm speaking too fast. I'm good. If anything, I'm happy we can talk without me glancing at Chantel for help. I hope I am understandable. Honestly, there were so many things I wanted to tell or ask you back in Belgium that I didn't know how to say. Oh? Like... Like... How interesting your eating habits are. H hey Ask about the bracelet you wore? What movies you liked? She pressed her pointer fingers together, glancing away nervously. I if it was alright to say you're cute? And that I love you. Aw, Joan. I love you. I love you a lot. I'm glad my feelings reached you. Her hands darted over and affectionately grasped mine, 
We exchanged a gentle kiss, our fingers still interlocked. After we separated, we leaned in and touched foreheads. Love you too, Joan. Let's enjoy our honeymoon stage to the fullest so Chantel doesn't gag at our lovey doveyness. Deal. Ah, such lovey dovey. Woo! We did it! You, we actually got Joan's romantic man. ending! Ah, it was so sweet! It was really, really cute. I liked it. I have well, it let's not it though, because she has a friendship ending, so There's I'll be going back through that to see how that ends out. Here. So I hope I'll see you over there, guys. Until then, see you later. Let's take things one day.